Refitting a radio controlled Glasgow paddle steamer part 1. Removing the cheddar model steam plant for inspection. This is a miniature tugboat but it's a paddle steamer and it's radio controlled and it has a cheddar model steam plant inside it. I bought it quite a long while back from the auction site that we all know and love and I went down to Nottingham to pick it up. The model is quite nicely detailed and very well made. There's nothing much wrong with the exterior apart from a loose stanchion on the top as you can see. The paddle wheels are made from plastic, the feathering paddle wheels, just like on a full size paddle steamer. The paddle blades fold inwards as they leave the water. In this short video series I'm going to recommission the steam engine because it's not been run for a long time, I don't know how good it is, I need to hydraulically test the boiler and make sure it's safe to use. The first thing to go is the chimney, followed by the safety valve extension. The boiler is physically fastened to a bed plate using the boiler bands. The boiler bed plate is screwed to a substantial wooden base that runs the full length of the engine compartment. In this clip I'm removing the steam pipe from the boiler turret. The other end of this steam pipe is connected to the displacement lubricator. I've already unscrewed the boiler mounting screws, so now the boiler can be carefully lifted out of the boat, leaving the displacement lubricator attached to the steam pipe that feeds the engine. I always wondered what this was. It's a Perspex disc with a long bolt that connects to a plug in the boiler. I assume it's to remove the level plug without having to use a spanner. And I've just noticed that one of the nuts on the bolt itself is soft soldered to the plug. I've removed the entire assembly because I don't like it. Physically the boiler looks okay, there's no bulging. The wood could do with a bit of refinishing. But apart from that it seems fine. In this clip I'm removing the steam pipe from the engine. Because I'm also going to remove the engine. The engine mounts to a special frame, which just like the boiler is screwed to the wooden mounting in the bottom of the boat. So here's what's left, the paddle wheel driving gear, the radio control receiver and a servo. Oh yes, and this, a very small Cheddar Models condenser oil trap. These small condensers don't hold enough condensate and fill up in no time at all. I have an idea where I can fit two condensers, one down each side of the engine, which will allow for a higher water capacity and it will be much better for the boat's balance. There are two small hatches near the stern. The first one holds the gas tank and the second one holds the radio control servo that operates the rudder. I'm not too concerned about the rudder servo for the moment, I'm just removing the gas tap. Originally this boat had a very small commercial gas canister which was really difficult to get in and out of the boat. I think I'll use a refillable one. I've run into a bit of a problem. I cannot get the pipe out of the boat. The hole in the bulkhead is too small to allow either end to go through. So in the end, I cut the pipe with a pair of side cutters and used the bandsaw to cut one end of the pipe square. Then I re-silver soldered the pipe fitting. I heated up the pipe on the right to melt the silver solder, cleaned up the end of the pipe on the left and silver soldered the fitting to that. When I first bought this boat, I very carefully carried it from the house into my car because the mass was not removable, but it is now. I'm going to strengthen the part of the deck underneath where the mast fits so I can plug in the mast or remove it for transport. Time to look at the boiler. I'm removing the end cap from the water gauge. If you look at the glass you will see a series of white rings. This is lime scale, just like the stuff that you would get in your kettle if you live in the south of England. I want to remove these lime scale rings, so I'm using one of these, given to me by a friend who does a bit of shooting at a gun club. He likes firing vintage weapons like muskets at targets. And this thing that looks like a pipe cleaner, I think is probably designed to clean the hole that goes from the pan into the main board of the gun. But it's also very useful for cleaning the gauge glasses of model steam engines, although it's not working very well. In my acid bath, I don't use sulfuric acid, which is the normal thing that you would use in an acid bath to clean copper parts. I use a kettle descaler called Killrock K. So I dip this pipe cleaner thing in some of the acid in the acid bath, and almost immediately it removed the lime scale rings. This kettle descaler that I use is formic acid based, and as you can see it really is good at removing lime scale. In this clip I'm filling the boiler with some water to make sure that the water gauge works. And it's evident from this clip that no it doesn't, all the water just pours out of the overflow. 
What does this mean? Well, the water gauge is blocked, either at the top or more likely at the bottom. Once again, I'm taking off the top cap so I can remove the glass from the water gauge. You need to make sure that the nuts are slack, in fact, fully removed from the threaded part. I can also see some lime scale around the bottom nut too. And I can't say it's a good idea to have lime scale on your nuts. And on that note, I think I'll finish this episode. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.